Shalom, shalom to those far and near. Shalom, shalom to all who hear. Shalom, 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 everyone. I'm Bonnie Moore, and I'm president of Maranatha Ministries. That means come. Um, Lord Jesus. And God has good news for you. And we're going to share it today, right from his wonderful, omnipotent word. Everybody say, wow. Because his words are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. So let's go on a treasure hunt and find them today. So let's share screen. Let's get our hearts and our minds prepared to hear from God. Open my ears that I may hear. Open my eyes that I may see. Open my heart, O oh Lord, to hear your voice. Speak, Lord, I'm listening. Your servant I will be. To do your will is my Delight, speak, Lord, I'm listening, your servant I will be. For to do your will, O Lord, is my delight. It is delightful to do his will, because his will for you, he knows the plans he has for you, plans for your shalom, fullness of every area of your life, health, good provision, prosperity, good family, good relationships, fruitful work. All of that is shalom and not evil. And he wants to give you a future and a hope. So we're going to be renewing our minds today for a life of joyful freedom. And we're looking at Psalm 23. And you probably know the Lord is my shepherd. And Today, we're going to say, out of the wilderness, a worshiper is born. This is our fourth lesson in meditating on the word of God. And we're using Psalm 23 as our meditation. And we said it was a three-step process. And if you hadn't seen our first life lesson of this series, I'll just give you a little reminder. We're training our tongue. Because as it tells us in the book of James... Your tongue is the steering wheel of your life. It's the helm, like of a ship. And to train the tongue, you start with your heart. For you're going to speak what's filling your mind and what you're thinking on, where your attention is. So here again, I'm going to list the process. First, we plant God's word in our hearts by speaking it and reading it and thinking on it. And then we eat it together. Like uh, Job said, the ear tests words like the palate, you know, tastes food. And your spirit's very happy when it gets spirit food, which is God's word. So just remember, you don't live on bread alone. You know, physical food is not going to fill that void in you, no matter how much, you know, you put in. But on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, that's going to feed you to have joy. 
He said, I share my words with you so you may have my joy and your joy may be full. Next, you rejoice in prayer. It's a time not of whining and crying and begging and telling God how awful things are and why doesn't he do something? No, it's a child of joy. You enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with hymns of praise. You rejoice in him. Why? He's your healer. He's your provider. He looks ahead and provides. He's your shepherd. He's guiding you. He's your righteousness. He's making you righteous. So, I mean, he has made you righteous when you take him as Lord. So he's promised you and is doing many things for you and in your life. So you need to go with confidence to the throne and receive what he's already given you in your account in heaven because you're blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavens. So you receive in your spirit first by faith and then you work it out by speaking it, by doing it, by standing on it. And then it will come to pass. You have to have patience, faith and patience, right? Perseverance. And with God, all things are possible. Nothing's too wonderful for him. So you receive it in your spirit. You cast your cares on him. You pour out your heart with joy, with your desire. You dream with him. You let him speak to you. Now, you draw close to God. He draws close to you. How do you draw close to God? Well, how do you draw close to anyone? You start talking with them. I mean, you can be with a total stranger in the elevator. If you guys start talking, you've drawn close and you're getting to know each other. So that's the same with God. If you never talk to him, some people go, well, God never talks to me. Well, do you talk to him? You draw close to him. He draws close to you. Talk with him. Ask him questions. You know, he'll give you answers. He he talks. I mean, he's he's quite, uh, you know, he's a person in the, set, the sense he's three persons in one divine Lord. And he's like us. He created us in his image. So, yes, he can converse with you very nicely. I and mean, it's beautiful to converse with him. So much fun. And never try to figure things out on your own. Just call on him, it says, and he'll tell you great and mighty things you couldn't know. He doesn't lie. You call, he'll answer. It's very true. So finally, whenever you fear or condemnation enters you or depression or um, doubt, then you have to answer it with the result you find in God's word when you're meditating. Like he'd say, oh, you, you know, you're broke, you lack, you'll never have anything. He said, no, the Lord is my shepherd. There's nothing I shall want. And we'll get down to when he sets a table before you, you know, and you dwell in his house forever. He's given you the kingdom and everything is there. So then you cast out the devil. You say, you know, unclean spirit of fear. God didn't give me a spirit of fear, power, love, and a sound mind. Be gone, spirit of fear in Jesus' name. And then you cast your cares on the Lord and, and trust that he'll make everything work out well for you. You don't need to fear. God is with you. And who can be against you? So you cast that care on him and you don't worry about it. You thank him. You thank in advance. And if you trust, you'll be able to do this. If you know God, he always comes through. And he already has actually in Jesus Christ. You just have to receive it and work it out. Now, in our last, last uh, life lesson, we consider verse the end of verse three. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So we reevaluated our path in that lesson. Now, this week, we're going to meditate on the next verse, which is, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and some, may, some of you may feel like you are there right now, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So, and we know he's going to bring us out, because what are we doing? We're walking through. We're not parking there. So let us continue with our good shepherd as he leads us on our way to freedom. So first, um, I'm going to turn to Psalm 40, which David also wrote, where he's really down in the pit. And some of you may feel that way. I, I have done that too, but no more. I waited, waited for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my prayer, my cry. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction. So you could be in a financial destruction. You could be in terminal, you know, to have a terminal disease. You could have pain that you don't think is going to go away. But he can bring you out of it. I know. I've been through a lot of stuff. Out of the miry clay. And he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. He put a new song. Ah, here's the key. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. Psalm 40, lines one through three. Now you see here, you're beginning to see a key of David. 
Yes, the praise, the worship. Well, let's go on. And even in the valley of trouble and in a dark cave and in a pit of destruction. Now, David is in a very low valley of darkness here. He describes it as a miry pit of destruction where there seems no way out of that slippery slope in the deep shaft of the pit. And some of you may feel like you've gotten there, but you don't have to stay there. That's the good news. You got a healer. You got a provider. You got a shepherd. You got a deliverer. You got the Lord, your sanctifier. But you see, he waited on God with urgency. I waited, waited. You know, he called to God and God brought him out. And where did he set him? On height, above and not beneath. You know, you never want to go beneath. You want to go above. In an argument with someone, don't get in that kind of thing where you're yelling match and, and, and being just as nasty to each other. That's going below. Stay above and walk in love and speak calmly and speak the truth in love. Now, you can't argue that way. It takes two to get into that kind of thing. So here, um, the word for the rock is a high cliff. You're up high. You're seeing things by a different perspective. Now, let us go on to verse 12 of Psalm 40. And you'll see how he got in that pit and what he did that got him out as well. For evils beyond number have surrounded me. My iniquities have overtaken me so that I'm not able to see. They're more numerous than the hairs of my head and my heart has failed me. Well, he's saying he got there by his own failures. They've come back to roost, so to speak. Um, you have to know the devil will tempt you to sin. And once he gets you to sin, he will accuse you of that sin and load you with shame and guilt and depression over ruining your life. But you haven't. God took all those sins off you and put them on Jesus. It's not your fault anymore. Once you repent and return to him, you can rejoice for he's going to restore you. So he'll then, you know, put the blame on you and accuse you night and day. That's what he did to Judas, and he couldn't take it. He commit he 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 used Judas to sin and then destroy himself. He used him to do it himself. So don't be cooperating with the devil and destroy yourself. And in the same manner, you have such a beautiful gift from God. There's no one else like you. Your DNA, your voice print, the color virus and the iris in your eye. You know, your, your fingerprints. There's no one else from the beginning to the end of time like you. God wanted you. And he gave you the gift of yourself. Enjoy that. Enjoy that gift of life. And it's going to be forever with him if you'll just go to him and take him as your Lord. Be in his jurisdiction so you can have healing. You can have prosperity. You can have joy. Unspeakable, filled with glory. And you can hear him and talk with him all the time. And that's the most fun of life. You know, that's the most fun life of all. Now, uh, David speaks of walking in that dark valley of the shadow of death in Psalm 23. And there he has fear, depression, pain. Well, you know, the wages of sin is death. But we, have, we can trump that for the gift is not like the offense. It's the free gift to you in Christ Jesus of God's own righteousness in place of your unrighteousness. And he takes your sin, you take his righteousness. And that should make you sing with joy right now. Thankful praise. Now, in Psalm 23, you'll notice that David declares he's walking through that dark valley. He's not stuck there. You're not stuck anywhere. You might think it looks like the, like Moses with the Israelites, the Red Sea in its deepest place on one side and a canyon on the other with all of Pharaoh's charioteers coming to either kill you or take you back as a slave. That didn't look the... Uh, like the most pleasant place to be. But the Lord already had a plan for a way out. And it was brilliant. The most brilliant battle strategy. For people with no weapons and no experience in war, you just part the sea, they walk through. And when the other guys try to get in on their miracle to kill them, well, once they passed, the miracle was over and the sea fell back down and they were all drowned. So you see, um, the Lord always has a way and he has the most clever strategy to deliver you with what you've got at that moment. So why are there all these trials? Well, Adam put us all there by giving his dominion authority over to the devil and corrupting all the flesh by, you know, being born again of a lie and corrupting the seed. So we have physical death 
And indeed, the sentence was eternal death on him. But Jesus came and took that away from us by offering his eternal life in the flesh, born again from the word and not from Adam's seed in our place because we couldn't pay. We were all born of Adam's seed. So he did it and he redeemed us. He bought us. He paid the debt to God of that eternal life and bought us. And he took all our sins on himself. Otherwise, he couldn't have died because he was born of eternal seed. But once he took the sin in himself, the wages of sin was death. So he died for us. And that is amazing. So he's going to open that. He's going to turn the valley of trouble into a door of hope for you. Um, now, line 13 of Psalm 4, he says, Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. Make haste, O Lord, to help me. So he calls on the Lord, uh, God, which is always what you should do. And he asked God to deliver him and help him through those coming against him to injure him. Let those be ashamed and humiliated together who seek my soul to destroy it. Now, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. People will work on those. Let those be turned back and dishonored who delight to injure me. Let those be appalled because of their shame who say to me, aha, aha. You know, so you call on God and you don't run from God, no matter how you got into a dark valley or who put you in there, whether someone else threw you in there or you got yourself in there, I'm just going to get you out because your righteousness and your vindication is from him. So the wisest move you can make is not to run away from God when you get in a storm or a trial or whatever accident is you hang on to Jesus and you get a miracle. That's good. Because when Peter began to sink, he called on Jesus and he pulled him out, right? So how does David respond to this dark place where he's trapped by his iniquities and his foes? Well, he magnifies God and minimizes the problem. He learned how to do that with Goliath. He didn't look at the big giant. He looked at God. And God was bigger. So let all who seek you uh, rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say continually, the Lord be magnified. You know? Magnify, magnify, magnify the Lord with me. Magnify, magnify, magnify the Lord. So you praise him. What does it mean to magnify? You take the magnifying glass and you make something very big. Well, you make his word. I'm your healer. Very big against that disease that's coming on you. And fine. And then you have peace. And then you can route it out. Cast the thing out. It's less. In the name of Jesus, we'll take care of it. And finally, he acknowledges that he can't you know, get through this on his own. He keeps falling. You know, you may keep doing the same sin. You may have an addiction. You can't do it on your own. But God will lead you out of it and make you unaddicted. <laughs> Um, since I am afflicted, that word is anav in Hebrew, which means humbled and meek and needy, let the Lord, now here in that psalm, you'll see the Lord in small case, a uh, lower case. It call, he's calling on Adonai. Now that word means God and man. You can call Adonai Lord, man, or Adonai God. And it signifies Jesus in the Old Testament. Like the Lord said to my Lord, look at Psalm 110. You'll see all in caps, Yahweh. And then you see in smalls, Adonai. So the father is speaking to the son there. And then Jesus, Jesus quotes that. Now, be mindful of me. Well, that's what he's saying. Think of me, Lord. Sounds like uh, the thief on the cross. Remember me, Jesus, when you enter your kingdom. Be mindful of me. Don't remember my sins. Remember me in your goodness, in your kindness. That's from Psalm 25. Now, in Jesus, you have to know God's mindful of you. He sent him to save you. God so loved you, he sent you his son so that you won't perish, but have eternal life. He didn't come to judge you, but to save you. And he gives you power of all the forces of the evil one and unites you to himself. Reconcile. So how does David conclude? And please pay attention to the solution. You are my help. That's one of the names of God. My helper. My deliverer. Do not delay. Oh, my God. He's your God. So God is pleased when you would see him as your helper. He said it glorifies him. And your deliverer in every area of your life, especially when with your own sins and failings. That's why he sent Jesus. 
not as your judge, but to set you free from all those things. And that's John 3, 16, right? That God so loved you that he gave you his only begotten son, that you who believe in him will never perish, but have eternal life. That's what Jesus is all about. Don't you love him? Don't you want him as your savior? He's going to deliver you out of everything. He, he's, he's like his name, salvation in every situation. His name in Hebrew is Yeshua, which just simply means salvation. So this is God's will for you. He didn't send Jesus to judge you, but to save you. So if you want to get saved from what you're, even from yourself, it's a good idea to walk with the good shepherd and to walk with somebody you got to agree. So you got to agree you're healed. You got to agree you're loved. You got to agree that you have joy in him. And where's he going to lead you? Table of plenty. So what I say you need to do, you need to repent. You need to return. Repent just means change your mind. Know you're forgiven. Stop accusing yourself. Know you're loved. Stop walking out of love and hate. Know you're blessed. Know you're favored. You know he planned you from before the creation of the world, from eternity. He had you in mind. That's why you're so unique. And you rejoice over that, yeah? You return to him, you draw close to him, you talk with him, and he'll restore better than before. When he restores, it's better quality and better quantity. Now, if you'll note in line 12, he lets you know how to get through trials. You, O Lord, will not withhold your compassion from me, your loving kindness, and your truth will continually preserve me. Um, that's the line before line 12, so it's line 11, right? So cling to God, cling to God's word, even when it looks really dark. And the God of peace himself, he tells us this, will sanctify you entirely and preserve your spirit and your soul and your body complete without blame at the coming of your Lord Jesus Christ. Complete, perfect, everything in good working order. Now, the good shepherd calls you by name, and God is faithful to bring it to pass. He'll complete the good work he's begun in you. So be mindful of God as your side, at your side. David said, I always put him at my side. And draw close to him. He's your helper, deliverer. He's your refuge. He's your champion. He's your hero. He's your father forever. He's your healer, your counselor, your provider, your savior, your beloved, your friend. Those are all titles that he calls himself. Not just when you're perfect, but where you failed. He knows we failed. The spirit is willing, he said, but the flesh is weak. So pray to avoid temptations. But you know, you've got to realize in every life, there's a test. And it's, are you going to choose life? The goodness, the blessing, or you can choose death, the evil, the curse. Adam chose death. You don't want to do that. Um, but there will be a test because he's got to see if he can trust you with heaven. He doesn't want another Lucifer up there who's going to rebel and take a third of the angels and have to be kicked out. He doesn't want another Adam who doesn't follow or trust him. He wants someone who really wants him and really loves him. And we'll walk as he does, in love, in truth, in faithfulness. That's what he's looking for in your heart. Not so much works, but a heart full of love. For him and others, wanting them all to be saved and come to know the truth. So where does he come out to? Well, after walking through that valley, he comes out to a table. Plenty, even with the enemy still around. An anointed head, a cup overflows. And he's led into God's house. So you feed to fight. You must feed on God's word to have the victory. And so you're not going to have it without faith. Without faith, you won't be strong. You know, you won't know who you are in Christ. You won't know what to answer the devil when he tells you you're not forgiven. Or when he tells you you have depression. Or he tells you you're going to die from that disease. Or you're never going to walk again. Or you're never going to have no pain again. Say, what a liar, because I have the Lord, my shepherd. He's my healer. He's my provider. So he brings you into the banquet hall and his banner over his love. But what does he tell you? When you're in that dark valley out in the desert, the valley of trouble, he can make it into a door of hope if you sing there, as in the days of your youth, as in the days when you came out of Egypt. What did they do when they came out of Egypt? Read Exodus 15. They sing what they sing. The Lord is my strength and song. 
and he must become my salvation. So they were singing praise that he was their strength and what? Their song. So out of the wilderness comes a worshiper. So when you're in the wilderness and you're down low and you're hiding in caves like David was doing from Saul, he became a worshiper. And God walked him right out of that to be king of Israel and Judah in a lovely palace. But he didn't stop praising. He got praise and worshipers 24-7 before the Ark of the Covenant, singing the praises of the Lord. And he always was blessed. He won every battle from then on. Because God espouses you to him forever in loving kindness and compassion. And he'll uphold you. So think of him that way. And if you're in the wilderness, become a worshiper. Sing his praise, trust him, and watch him lead you out to joy. So, and heal you too. So prayer of salvation, you want to take this Lord as yours. He's the only God. He's the only Lord. And you want to be with him. So say with me, Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. He died for me. I believe you raised him from the dead. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit and lead me in that beautiful life you prepared for me in advance that I might enjoy it. Everybody say amen. And you know, in Romans 10, it tells you that if you believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead by the Father, all your sins gone, and you speak with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, that you made righteous and you have salvation. So congratulations, you're at salvation now. So hold up your hands in the shin, which is for Shaddai, which means that God is enough, more than enough in every situation. And let's take the blessings from Numbers chapter six. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and give you his grace. The Lord smile upon you and give you shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom, everyone. Have a, well, we'll meet again at the next life lesson for more meditation on Psalm 23. Thank you for joining me. This is really only the beginning. I make all things new. Resurrection joy is there for all of you. I have promised you eternal life and it is there for you in Jesus. You have only to receive him.